Hey guys, welcome to another Bible Stories with Bella. I am so excited for today because we are going to find the fruits of the Spirit in the story of one of my favorite queens, Esther. She was an amazing, amazing woman of the Bible and I'm so excited to share this story with you. Now on Sunday, Miss Jamie reviewed all of our fruits of the Spirit. So we've got love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So as we read our story, I want you to look and see if you can find the fruits of the Spirit in the story of Esther. Here we go. This is called Esther Saves the Day. Once there was a king who had almost everything, but he still wasn't happy for he didn't have a queen. The wise men suggested that he issue this command. Let a search be made in every corner of the land. Oh, I'm awfully glad he's not searching today because it's raining so hard outside. Can you hear it? I can. Now Esther was an orphan who lived with Mordecai. The king's men saw her as they were riding by. They took her to the palace and brought her to the king. The king was very pleased with her and chose her as his queen. So Esther's parents had died and she went to live with her cousin Mordecai, who raised her. Now, Esther had to have a lot of patience in this time. So they, take, they took her to the palace and she had to prepare for a whole year before she could see the king. Did you know that? She had to go and do all sorts of things before she was ready to see the king. So she had to be very patient before she knew if she was going to be queen. But he did choose her, he chose her in the end. So Mordecai would often sit beside the palace gate. He saw a man named Haman who was riding proud and straight. When Haman looked at Mordecai, his heart was filled with hate. As Haman passed the gate, for Mordecai would never bow as Haman passed the gate. Haman was so angry that he went and got permission to kill God's special people, the Jewish population. So whenever Haman, who was one of the king's advisors, whenever he went out, he wanted all the people to bow to him. But Mordecai was faithful to God. And so he wouldn't bow to Haman. He refused to bow, which made Haman really angry. So Haman tricked the king. He tricked the king into making a law that would kill all of God's people. What do you think about that? Haman doesn't sound like a very kind dude, does he? He's not a very kind man. Let's see what happens next. The rule went out across the land to people everywhere. When Mordecai heard it, it filled him with despair. He told Queen Esther, you must go and kneel before the king. Perhaps you can persuade him to stop this awful thing. Now, for the queen to ask something like this of the king was a really big deal. It was a really big thing. She couldn't just walk in and say, Hey, King, can I have this? She had to be very patient and know when was the right time. But she loved her people so much that she knew that she had to be brave and make this choice. Her gentle heart toward Mordecai and toward her people is what made her brave enough to go and talk to the king. So Esther fixed a banquet as soon as she was able. She asked the king and Haman to join her at the table. The king was very happy with the dinner she had made. Please tell me what you want, he said. You needn't be afraid. So Esther made a banquet for both for her and for the king and for Haman. So she invited Haman too. So that took a lot of extra bravery. Then Esther cried, please spare my life and save my people too. This wicked man had made a plan to murder every Jew. The king jumped up and hollered, Haman, is it true? 
then you will die and Mordecai will rule instead of you. The people made a holiday to celebrate the way that Esther saved her people's lives on that important day. So not only did Esther save all of her people's lives, Mordecai also, his faithfulness was rewarded and he got to come be an advisor to the king to help protect his people. So Esther's love for her people and her kind heart toward her people helped save her people that day. So let's see if we can think. Love, she, her love helped save her people. Joy, remember the celebration that happened at the end? They were so excited because Esther had helped save them and they were going to be safe in that kingdom. Love, joy, peace. They finally were at peace. Mordecai's spirit was able to be at peace because he knew that his people were saved. Joy, peace, patience. Oh, Esther had to be so patient. She had to be patient to wait a year to meet the king. Then she had to be patient and find just the right time when to ask. Um, for the king to help her. Patience, kindness. Oh, there's a lot of kindness in this story. There's a lot of kindness in this story. Kindness, faithfulness. That one's easy. Mordecai and Esther were both so faithful to God and saving their people. Gentleness. When Mordecai took Esther in as a kid, he raised her. He raised her that was his gentleness and he raised her to have a gentle spirit gentleness and self-control do you think when Esther heard that all of her people were going to be killed do you think she might have been angry do you think Mordecai and the people might have been angry what if they had just been loud and been really really angry the whole time do you think Esther would have been able to speak to the king she used her self-control and chose her time to make the good choice and ask gently and kindly, can you please save my people? And the king responded with kindness saying, yes, of course, we will save your people. So that's one of my favorite stories of the fruit of the spirit. So many Bible characters show so many of the fruits of the spirit. I hope you were able to find the fruits of the spirit in Esther's story. I'll see you later.